Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys, and my social media stuff is down there at the bottom. Now today we're actually gonna go outside and I'm gonna show you this little easy to do water feature that I made to try to attract birds into the backyard. And I'm also gonna show you some of the results. So it's a quick video, but I hope you enjoy it and maybe you get some ideas from it as well. All right, so today we're outside and we're gonna talk about water. And I think it's pretty easy to understand the importance of water to birds, both uh, house birds or resident birds, as well as migratory birds. And what I decided to do this spring is set up a little bit of a water feature. Now, to go through what water features you can put into your own home, there's a lot of different options. If you have the money, and honestly, probably next year I'll have a different, uh, more advanced water feature, but a lot of people can't afford to either run electrical or run water away from their home and uh, take the time to invest in a small pond or running water. So uh, I wanted to show you an economical option, something I wanted to experiment with. I played around with a few different options and here's what I came up with. Um, I started with a bird bath and I, I wanted something that looked natural. So if I have birds perching in this area, uh, I wanted something that didn't look cement or man-made. So, this company, uh, it's a company called Bushy Box, and they actually make these, these logs that are hollowed out, and in this case, it's got a basin inside of it. And you fill the basin, I put a little liner in mine, but you fill the basin with water. I like to add these rocks, and you'll notice when you have these rocks, I'll show you some, some images here, that you'll see birds that just like to perch, and you can rotate them around and do some things. Now, I've also used this same log in winter for feeding show you a couple of images of what that looks like and in these images you'll get an idea of what the total uh, product looks like so again I'll put a link down in here it's a company called Bushy Box is the brand that I chose to go with and I didn't find a whole lot of, of um, these natural looking bird bath slash feeders out there but this was a really good option for me now the second product I needed I needed to get water in here so certainly you can just fill it with water but but a couple things one water gets stagnant not really good for mosquitoes, but probably not also so healthy for the birds. The second thing is it, the water is not only what attracts the bird, but it's the sound of water that attracts birds. So what I did is I wanted something that would trickle down into this. Now, you could, if you're a uh, do-it-yourself person and you like to MacGyver some things, you could certainly try to set up something up here with a drip. So you could take a, a gallon jug or uh, maybe one of those sports coolers and you could put a valve on it or just drill a hole and let it drip. And when you do that, uh, most of the time we call these drips. So when you're setting up your drip, you would just want to have something that's sturdy and structural. Um, but here's what I came up with. I went on to Amazon and I got this little outdoor shower. I'm going to show you now, actually, I'll cut away and I'll show you how I filled this up. Uh, and then I'll get this one set up. Okay, so you can see my, my pollinator garden here, by the way. And then in the back, that big tree back there, that, all that green, that's where we're going to um, actually set up the water. And um, I'm gonna fill the bag, I'll show you, it's very simple, I'll show you how I fill that and what it looks like, and then I'll show it to you set up over here. So this is the, uh, the, the actual bag that I'm gonna be using, and I'll flip this around. So as you can see, just a, a little inexpensive, um, they call this an outdoor shower. And you'll see the pipe down here, I've modified it so I actually took and just broke this off. And the thing I like about this is it's got the valve so I can control how much water comes out. Um, this once filled will, it'll go for about two hours, maybe only 30 minutes if you really have it streaming fast, but I've gotten a three to four hours out of it if you just have it drip. So I'll get this filled up and set up, but basically you're just gonna screw this open, fill it up and then use the attached hangers to hang it from the tree. And I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, so now that I've got this filled, it's got a little strap here, and I found this nice little area for mine to mount to. So I'm gonna mount it right here, and there it is. Um, the other thing I liked about this is this little plastic tubing I can move around, uh, and it's got the valve that I showed before. And then I just found a pretty ideal location here for this. I run it through, in this case, this little branch, and I'll turn this valve on. And then I can control 
how fast that water wants to run. And you can hear that sound. That's the sound that brings birds in. Now, I'm not going to leave this sound running the whole time. I'll actually just kind of turn it down here. Um, and I'm lucky that I've got a situation where I've got some trees that are about the right height. I found a branch that's about the right height, and it just all worked out once I got the placement down. Uh, this tree is a southern catalpa or northern catalpa. It's one of the catalpa species. And um, it's got these beautiful big green leaves. But in spring, those leaves are very small, and I, I like to shoot during migration, I'm able to get them in this tree. And then I've got some back here that they'll land on as well. Certainly you could set up some perches in here. And what I'm finding is that there's two types of birds that I got to be attracted to the water. One are my resident birds. So house sparrow, house wren, you know, those birds that probably everybody has no matter where you live, even in residential areas. Now I live on the edge of the woods back here. So I've got my residential birds, but I also have some birds that come up and I call them my wood birds. And some of these are migratory, um, but specifically uh, I found out that wood thrush started to come in here uh, on a regular basis and, and explore the bird bath. My American robins love it, my catbirds love it. Um, and I also have a pair of nesting orioles. Now the, the orioles have not come down here. That was actually my goal in setting this up this year. So maybe when I get more water in here or they may have had another source that they're using. So I have the resident birds and I have the yard birds or the wood birds. Uh, the third category of birds I was exploring is the migratory birds. And I do get a few warblers that actually come onto my property right here at the edge of the woods. They don't normally breed here, but they come through and they hang out for a few weeks. And these are yellow rumps, American red starts. I had a magnolia warbler this year, uh, black and white warblers. I get about six or seven species that will seem to hang around in here for a few days. And what I wanted to see is will any of them come into a, a very small feature. You can see this is only about a little over a foot in diameter. Will any of those actually use it as a bird bath? And I set up here several mornings to experiment with this. And what I found is that none of them actually, during the time that I was filming, actually came in and, and bathed in it. It might be because it's a little too small, or it might just be that I wasn't here at the right time. But what they did on several occasions is come low into these branches. Now I will tell you, I sat in this blind a, a lot, and I garden in here every day. And I never saw the warblers come low, unless the water was running. So I do think there was something here, and maybe again, maybe this, the basin just wasn't right for them to bathe in. Uh, they tend to like, the warblers tend to like shallower water, and the larger the robins and the catbirds, they like a little deeper water, so I may have to play around with that. But, once I turned this water on, and I would set up in my blind, I would notice that they would come a little bit lower, and these trees seemed seemingly to explore and look around. I'm gonna show you some of the images that I captured of the warblers, and then I'll start to show you some of the resident birds that I got. So this is my setup. Uh, I'll link all of this in the video, but I've got the outdoor shower and I've got this little bird. I'm using it as a bird bath by Bushy Box. I put a liner in there with some rocks and I found this to be a great little starter set. Very economical, very easy to do. And uh, I really enjoyed it. So I'm going to show you a whole series of images from the blind that I set up here. Just a, a simple throw blind over the tripod and some of the other experiences I had when I was in the blind this spring. So thanks for jumping in and uh, we'll go back to the office and I'll wrap up. And that's my backyard feature. You could see very, very simple. Um, the thing I liked about the, the feeder that I'm using or that bird bath that I'm using is it's very versatile. So I showed you how I used it in winter as a feeder and then cleaned it out and used it as a bird bath in spring. So I liked that option of having to do that. It is nice to have a winter option sometimes when it's tough and there's not a lot to shoot, um, especially on like snowy days where you can just shoot and get creative in the snow and do some things at home. And then again, repurpose it outside in the spring or fall for the, uh, the bird bath. Um, I hope you liked the idea with the outdoor shower. I thought it was creative and, and kind of clever and uh, very functional and it worked very well. So, and I hope you like the images. I was really happy. Um, I will tell you, don't ask me about the blind. It's very simple. I expect some questions about that. I literally just took my tripod. I have a lens coat. I'll link that in the in the description as well in case people are wondering what that is. It's just a, called a throw blind. So it just goes over you and the tripod, but it works very well. I showed you at the end a deer that came within about 10 or 15 feet. I think he actually smelled me at some point because he started to look around uh, and then saw the movement of my lens. And then that little fox that I showed, one of the last images, I'll actually pop it up here because it's just so cute. 
um, he just sat there for, gosh, it, it seemed like minutes, but, but for at least a minute and just sat there and crawled under the fence um, that separates my backyard from the county property behind me in the woods. And he just crawled out from there and, and stood there. So in addition to getting the birds, just having, and I have a, a nice setup because I do have this edge of the woods kind of property. So, um, but just, just having that experience and getting those little moments was really, really nice. So maybe you can get creative in your backyard. You don't have to be on the woods to do that. You could certainly do this in a residential area and explore some of your, your kind of uh, house birds or yard birds. I will tell you that um, I, one of the, the, my favorite images this year, and I'll pull it up here. Uh, I showed it in the video was this house finch. Uh, I call him Oscar. He's a local guy. He hangs out, kind of runs parts of my house and chases everybody off. But I got him in that red bud um, and he visits that, that bird bath quite regularly. Uh, Oscar and Rosa are their names. So um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I had a lot of fun making it. Had a lot of fun actually doing it as well. And I think next season I will do this again. And hopefully I'll have a different water feature to show you. Something a little bit um, bigger and better. But it is going to require some electricity to get run out to that area that I like. So anyway, thanks for all your support. I really, really do appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed the video today. And I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.